Hi everyone, my name is Mark, and I am the sole developer of Strato. So, Strato is a bit of a different game in that you do not direct your player like you would a lot of other games. Let's say Super Mario Brothers, for instance. You don't... What you do is you direct your player. You tell them to move up, move down, move left, move right, jump, duck, that sort of thing. And also to run. So you direct your player and you tell them what to do. Strato is a bit different in that you actually control the character on the screen. In this case, it's the paper airplane. So when I say that you control your character, you are controlling the actual fins on the aircraft. So in this case, I'm using W and S to pull the aileron up and down. There's I and K. If you want, you can use the Xbox controller or you can use generic game controllers. And um, so in this case, I'm just using W's IK. There's A and L, which are used to activate the air brakes. And then there's D and J, which will actuate the, um, the wing folding. And those can be combined with aileron pulling up controls. So you're relying on the physics of the game, the aerodynamics of your plane, as well as pulling the fins. And you can think of pulling the fins as like sticking your arm out into the wind to catch and deflect air, create air resistance, and also create, um, you know, vector, you're vectoring the air as your plane cuts through the wind. Um, you're vectoring that, those little gusts of air, and those are going to generate steering torque for your airplane. This has a lot of ramifications for an unpowered glider, because if you keep flying upwards, gravity will eventually take effect, slow you down, and your plane will lapse into a stall because your plane is not moving fast enough in order to generate lift. On the, the wings cannot generate lift if they're not moving through the air. And the control flaps cannot create steering torque if they don't have air to deflect. If you're not moving through the air, they have nothing to deflect. This also has future further ramifications in that if you're going very, very slowly, the less responsive your controls become, and the more that you have to lean on the controls to get any response out of them, also, if you're falling backwards, you'll find that your controls even get reversed. And if you are moving very, very rapidly, if you are moving very quickly, your steering will become very equally sensitive and erratic. And so people often will say, oh, can you turn the sensitivity of the controls down? And really, that is all just a factor of how fast you are moving. So this is a really, really key thing. Now, I am using the WSIK D and J, so D and J let me fold my wings. A and L are the air brakes to go left and right. But now the air brakes slow you down considerably, and as a result, if you slow down too much, you will go into stall. You will find that your aircraft becomes relatively unresponsive when you are trying to, uh, to control it, when you're trying to you know, get it to go one way or another. If you're in a stall, you lose control. So. If you are, I guess I, at this point, I should probably show you how to set up your controls. Uh, obviously you can turn on the Xbox controller, or turn it off. Uh, you've got the generic gamepad. So if you have, if you don't have an Xbox brand controller, a Microsoft Xbox controller, you can use your own USB controller. And you might, in many cases, I think a lot of people will have multiple controllers. They may have a Razer controller and a, and a gamepad and a Stromo and, and you know, or Weaver and various other devices, um, all of which are different joysticks. And so when you have multiple joysticks hooked up, uh, Straddle will let you select from those controllers which one you want to use. So if you press the up and down arrow keys, you can see that the number on that D-pad, on that little thing, that changes. right? Or if you want, you can use the mouse wheel to roll that up and down, and that will change. But uh, you will want to select the number of your game controller. So the idea is that you have to select the number, turn it off, turn it back on, and then um, you know move your controller and see if... Hold on a second, let me grab my own controller. So if I move that down to, let's say, number one, right, I have to turn it off, turn it back on, and now you'll see that I can use my Xbox controller as a generic game controller. But if you want, you can also use the Xbox controller for that. Now, in terms of which one is better, honestly, I don't know. Personally, I would prefer to use the keyboard. And so, um, but the people, people who use game controllers say, oh man, the game controller is way better than the keyboard, and you're missing out if you're using a keyboard. And then there are people who use 
the uh, keyboard and say the other the opposite and they see that if you're using a game call controller it just doesn't quite offer you the same freedom so really it's up to you which one you prefer to use and so if you're using the uh, xbox controller the left stick if i move the stick up and down vertically it doesn't i'm not using the right the uh, the the horizontal axis that will allow you to adjust one of the ailerons the other stick the right stick controls right aileron and so pulling them down or pulling them up will allow you to you know change those flaps which way they're going uh pulling the the triggers lets you actuate the air brakes and if you can pull them simultaneously as for a clench and also there are the little bumpers at the top so hitting that and also pulling up on a joystick will let you perform handbrake turns with the ailerons so there's that so personally i'm going to be using the uh the keyboard and i'm going to turn on the uh the, the keyboard indicators so if i hold down the tilde or um back quote key the one next to the number one just underneath the escape key if i hold that down and i hit the space bar to unpause the game you'll now see little uh indicators which show which keys i'm hitting so a and a and l uh d and j uh w s i and k which are these keys and so let's get into the actual piloting of the craft that's right you actually have to learn how to fly the craft so in this case uh i'm using w s or rather in this case i'm using s and k so s and k simultaneously will make me pitch the airplane if i hold it down it will perform a barrel it will perform a flip a back flip on the other hand if i press it, uh, w and i simultaneously it will perform a front flip and whenever you are performing these maneuvers you have to make sure that there is adequate room for you to perform such maneuvers so there is also just using single singular ailerons single ailerons at a time will allow you to bank and also turn so in this case i if i hold the key too long if i hold it very very hard while i'm traveling quickly i will perform a barrel roll but if you don't want to do a full barrel roll and you don't want to completely turn over then you must pulse turn on the keyboard meaning you'll see that i'm tapping the key to avoid completely flipping over if you're using a gam uh, a gamepad you're using the joysticks on the gamepad you will have to either pulse turn or lightly press the control down it's up to you which way you want to use it but that's really how we do things the turning is often accomplished by banking like this as opposed to using the air brakes the air brakes are air brakes they slow you down as brakes that's what brakes generally do now generally do the reason why the air brakes exist is sometimes you really do need to slow down. You're going to bang into something. If you bang into something, it won't kill you. Boop. It just kills all your speed, pretty much. You know, physics says, as, you know, that's what crashing into things does. And it will slow you down to the point where you'll probably start stalling. And so you have to recover from your crash. Now, another very important thing is that the controls, because you are not directing your player and you're actually you're not directing the character but you're actually controlling the individual fins on the character this means that if the plane gets flipped upside down now all of your controls are reversed because the controls are relative to the plane so if you think about your plane at you what you're doing is you're basically put you're sticking your arms out right so if your plane sideways you're sticking an arm out to catch the wind to steer the plane you have to deal the fact that you know your plane is uh that the orientation it's all relative to the orientation of the airplane and so sometimes i would i i practice flying upside down you can there are achievements if you can fly upside down for for 10 seconds without your uh your stun chain expiring uh, there's an achievement for that and you have it's a balancing act it's like balancing a bicycle balancing a unicycle right, or something like that you have to you have to work against that the plane has an auto leveling there's the, the bottom of the plane, the center of gravity on the plane is kind of low, so if you turn sideways and you let go of the controls, it will reorient itself. And your plane must is also subject to the forces of inertia, especially um, angular momentum. So this means that if you were to roll your plane and let go of the controls, your plane will continue to roll for a little while. So this means that if you want to perform clean turns, then you're going to have to counter turn to stop yourself from rotating. So in this case, I'm going to counter roll there to stop, counter roll again, like that. So turn, counter roll, yeah, and you have to counter roll in advance. You'll notice that all of these manipulations cause your plane to slow down. 
And again, because it is an unpowered gl glider, you must rely on gravity for your soul source power. You have to dive. In this case, I'm using I and K simultaneously to dive to gain speed, to maintain my airspeed. Now, your plane has a number of indicators all over it. You have what I like to call the toothpick and the cherry, which would be that blue indicator on the top and the red indicator on the bottom. So whenever you press K and S simultaneously, or you, press, uh, you will basically pull up towards that toothpick. And if you press W and I simultaneously, you will pull downwards, you'll front flip towards the cherry. It means that if you pull sideways and you press K and S simultaneously, you'll pull up sideways that way. And so if you're trying to make hard turns, you'll have to pulse turn. And when you're fully sideways, then you can, you can start pulling the other aileron simultaneously. It's up to you to find out the combinations. I cannot tell you all of the possible maneuvers because there's just so much variability. For instance, this is a maneuver I use called the canopy roll. The canopy roll is when I do this. It's, I, it's a lane changing maneuver and I use it whenever there's a block right in front of me and I suddenly need to change lanes and get that block out of my face, I will do a canopy roll. The canopy roll is accomplished by performing half of a barrel roll, and then I have to pull down on the other side to complete the barrel roll, like that. So I'm going to do it again. In this case, I'll do it to the left. Half a barrel roll, in which case I was pulling down S on the left side. I now have to press I on the other side, which is the opposite. So I'm doing a, so before it was a backflip barrel roll, now it's a front flip barrel roll on the other side to complete the roll. That is a canopy roll. And that is just one of the many maneuvers that you can learn in the game. Now, there is this thing called wing tucking, which is a recently added feature that not too many people are used to. Um, what wing tucking does is it folds your wings. It folds your wings, and of course your ailerons are normally up and down. If you fold your wings, and you, when you fold your wings, you can only pull your ailerons out. This is all you can do. The reason for this is that your, your air brakes are blocked by your wings when you fold them, and if you move your ailerons down, they too are blocked when you fold them down. This is why your ailerons can only go up. This has a lot of uses, or actually it has one very, very important use, and that is that if you press, if you fold a wing and you pull up on it, it rapidly turns you. It is the emergency turn. It's a very powerful emergency turn. It costs you some substantial amount of speed, but it's almost always preferred to bang into a wall. Then there is the clench. The clench is something that is very useful, where if you bang into a wall like this, you lose your speed, you clench both air brakes, and what it does is it's, it, it adds additional resistance to the back of your airplane, and it's like a parachute on the back of your airplane and it causes your nose to dive down. This is a favorable position for recovering from a stall after experiencing a collision. So the clench, as you can see, is getting my nose back down and it helps me recover. Other things that are important is that if you bang into something and suddenly find yourself upside down, you'll find that you'll have to pull down instead of pull up. So different inverted recovery maneuvers and you'll have to just practice and crash a great deal. In fact, I would say do it while your ring count is low and you have nothing to lose. Okay, there's also another thing I should show you with the tucking. Tucking performs magnetization on your aircraft. So when I tuck, it will magnetize my craft. See that green sphere on it? And it makes it so that your plane will stick to walls sticking to walls but it means that you can also slide down a wall when you slide down a wall you are charging up your slide hyperdrive you have an engine on the craft with an with a fuel tank on it and the fuel tank is charged specifically by sliding on surfaces when that engine kicks in after a short delay that engine will only kick in after you detach from the wall this is where things get really really complex so now that the engine is kicked in your plane is in powered flight and you are going to be moving incredibly fast this also means that any time you pull any particular fins on your craft, you're going to spin really, really fast. It's very, very unstable. Another thing I should tell you is that there is a system in here called Kaleidoscope. 
The kaleidoscope detects for collisions, and when you're about to have an, in, an imminent collision, time will slow down. That will give you time to react. And you can see it taking place here. This is not video editing, this is just the game. You can magnetize during your burn. While you're in, you're, you're in a burn, you can magnetize your craft. Another thing is that the camera does clip through the plane that you are attached to. This is very useful in that you can tell what is beyond the plane if you were to pull up. Also, when you magnetize, if the roof of your plane is closer to the surface, it will align your plane to that. It will align the roof of the plane to the surface that you are sticking to. Now, you can see right now that I'm just about to have a collision with the surface up ahead. So, I need to turn quickly. In this case, what I will do is I will fold my wings and I will pull up on one of my ailerons to perform the emergency turn. And from that, in that case, I managed to avoid a head-on collision. Head-on collisions in this game will put your burn to an end. They will also end your stunt combo. And so as I continue, I am going to, while you're magnetized, you can still pull your ailerons while you're magnetized to the surface and you can drive, you can wall drive on a surface. But right now I am wall driving, doing a burn slide. Another thing is that I said that sliding recharges your engine. It still takes effect during the burn. So you are going, while you're in a burn, if you are burn sliding during a tuck, so the idea is you, you stay tucked to stay magnetized, to keep on sliding, to keep your engine going. This will keep your burn going. As long as your burn is going, every time you get rings, there is a burn bonus, which is accumulated. And every time you hit those rings, your burn bonus is incremented. It goes up, and that is always constantly awarded to your score as you hit ring after ring after ring. Preserving your burn bonus is very good for a score short shortcut. And as you know, score is linked to the difficulty of the game. So try to keep your burn going as much as possible. And I would say early on in the game, before you even really get too far into you know trying to aim for a high score, master the burn technique. Now, let's see what else is there. Right, the engine... When the engine kicks in, I'm going to let the engine finish its burn. So, the engine has a musical delay to it. This means that when you slide, let me just get up to here, I'm going to tuck, magnetize, and slide. There's a delay before it kicks in. That delay is reset every time you touch a surface. Another thing is that when you listen to the music, I said it is, a, it is a musical delay. So listen to the, or rather I should say a rhythmic delay. You have to listen to the music that's playing. One, two, three. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Okay. On the one and the three, that is when your engine will go off. And it will always be at least two beats before your engine goes off. Three. That one happened on the three. So, it is important to note that musical or temp tempo delay. Another thing about the burn is that before your burn goes off, you can cancel your burn. This means that if you're in a disadvantageous position for your burn to go off and you're going to go ramming into a wall, you cancel it with the clench. The clench is when you hit A and L simultaneously or both air brakes at the same time. So I'm going to cancel that burn. I can turn D and J will perform the full tuck and that will resume my burn. So the thing is that there is a short there is that delay in there to give you time to turn but if that delay is not enough you can put your burn on hold for a short while your burn will be decaying while it's, while it's on hold so it won't be quite as powerful but it gives you it's better than ramming into a wall having it power ram you into a wall i'm going to 
go sliding back, back down there. And you can instantly or near instantly set off, you can near instantly set off your burn by pressing the, by doing a clench and a tuck. Clench, tuck simultaneously. So clench first, then tuck. Clench, tuck. That will fire your engine off even faster. But it's up to you to figure out, you know, kind of when you want to do that. And I guess that's pretty much all there is that I know about flying uh, the aircraft. There's, like I said, it was going to be a while. It's going to take a while. Um, all around you are orange splashes. These are proximity splashes. Pay attention to those. Uh, it means that it just tells you when you're getting close to the surface. And in poor lighting conditions, these splashes will be very, very useful. The triangles on the surfaces are collision indicators. These will tell you when you're about to bang into something. They show you the point on the surface that is nearest to you. So if you're going to bang into the surface, it will likely be that sir, that that triangle. But just remember, if you ever bang into a wall, you have several courses of action. You can either clench and let your tail come to the top again and resume flying. The other way to recover from that is to do a full tuck, slide down the surface to charge your engine, and let your engine do a clench and then just magnetize. And you can try, you know, see how long you can make that burn last. And in that case, I like that. So that's pretty much it. I uh, I don't think I want to go stretch this thing out any longer, and uh, I guess I will see you in the game forums. Thank you for trying Strato, thank you for playing Strato, buying Strato, and telling your friends about it.